Flowing right at the Vista Ridge Tunnel. Outbound Banfield, still very slow getting on, especially from the northbound I-5 side. You know Dasher and Dancer and Prancer and Vixen? Comet and Cupid and Donner and that other one? That's 1774.48 pounds on your roof. At Roof Life of Oregon, we make roofs right. Regular roof maintenance from Roof Life can extend the life of your roof by 15, even 20 years. Our CCP number is 125208. Roof Life. Roof maintenance and replacement for the naughty and nice. RoofLifeofOregon.com. We don't have money. Somebody's here. Now, broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, <coughs> the man. in the Washington Compost. I'm not one of them. And you've been turned down over and over and over again because you're no garrison killer. But you should feel very thankful for that. And the title of the piece the Washington Compost put on there, Al Franken should resign? Question mark? That's absurd. By Garrison Killer. And it, it was posted at 8.08 p.m. Eastern Time last night. And of course, Killer resigned less than 24 hours later, excuse me, was fired less than 24 hours later. Then it goes, my friend, Pastor B.D. Christensen, said something so good Sunday morning that I woke up and wrote it down. Something like, about making peace with the mistakes of the past and learning from them. It's slippery ground in general to just past actions by present standards with a benefit of hindsight that is morally highly questionable. And immediately I thought about the Minneapolis Park Board voting to rename Lake Calhoun as Lake B.E. Maka S.K.A. Because the man for whom it was named back in the early 1820s was a slavery enthusiast. So here we go. So he's defending Al Franken. <laughs> New York City was renamed the Robert F. Kennedy Bridge, but if you were to ask directions to that bridge, you might wind up in Pennsylvania, a state named for the common pencil. Uh, how can anybody follow this moron on NPR, NPR, or any of it? He went on. This will happen with Lake BDE Maka SKA. I, I don't even know what this is. The name will appear on signage. Well, when people look at the body of water, they will think Calhoun. The effect of this on the slave trade in Minneapolis will be slow. On the other hand, uh, Jean-Louis Kirok did well to rename himself Jack A. Jean-Louis. Would be unlikely to write on the road, but it's Jacques Kirok. The road was right up his alley. In 1963, Idlewild Airport on Long Island was renamed JFK, which stuck thanks to the clumsiness of Idlewild. No large airport is idle, and airline passengers do not care to think of aviation in terms of uh, wildness. Well, I can certainly see why the uh, Washington Post decided to publish this uh, act of genius. So he goes on, and what's his point? 
absurdity of our time is you know whom, which goes without saying, but I will anyway. What his election showed, this is Trump, of course, is that a considerable number of people, in order to demonstrate their frustration with the world as it is, are willing to drive their car with their children in the backseat over a cliff, smash the radiator, bust an axle, and walk away from, uh, feeling good about themselves. No other president in modern times has been held in contempt by a preponderance of people from the moment he said, so help me God. Actually, I think Obama's up there. I know not because of his race, because of his Marxism. This is hatred for his own country, a fundamental transformation. This is false associations with, you know, Reverend Wright and uh, others in the Chicago area, as well as his hate for the state of Israel. So, anyway, let us continue. You know, the present modern times has been held in contempt by, by preponderance of people for the moment he said, so help me God. The playboy blather, the smirk of privilege, the stunning contempt for factual truth. Is this about Ted Kennedy? How can the country come together when the president has nothing in common with 98% of the rest of us? Now he gets all this to get to Al Franken which is two paragraphs of the op-ed. And the Washington Compost thought this was absolute genius. And then there's Senator Al Franken. He did USO tours overseas when he was in comedy biz. He did it from deep in his heart, out of patriotism. And the show he did was broad comedy of a sort that goes back to the Middle Ages. What, molesting a woman? Shakespeare used those jokes now and then, and so did Bob Hope and Joey Heatherton when they entertain the troops. If you thought that Al stood outdoors at bases in Iraq and Afghanistan and told stories about small town life in the Midwest, you were wrong. On the flight home, in a spirit of low comedy, Al ogled, mistweeted, and pretended to grab her, and a picture was taken. Find way with the facts. Eleven years later, a talk show host in LA, she goes public, and there's talk of resignation. This is pure absurdity. And the atrocity it leads to is a code of public deadliness. No kidding. <coughs> Franken should change his name to Newman and put the USO debacle behind him, and then we'll change Frank Frankincense to Febreze. All right, he goes on in his uh, moronic, ir ir co uh, incoherent ramblings. So that's his defense of Al Franken. Yesterday. Today he's out. For the same, at least, general allegations. Similar enough. He's out. And then I'll give you the mindset of this Garrison Keeler, who has been on public radio for I don't know how long, receiving, I guess, public subsidies. As a host on the Minnesota Public Radio, April 1994. Hat tip C-SPAN. Here's one of the things that Garrison Keeler had to say. Cut three, go. When scandal breaks and we get to see the humanity of the great and the powerful revealed, naked, and dumb in front of us. There's always a cry for new rules, or at least some new awareness that will prevent this from ever happening again. We should be careful, though, not to make the world so fine and good that you and I can't enjoy living in it. A world in which there is no sexual harassment at all is a world in which there will not be any flirtation. Now, I don't mind flirtation. I mean, with me now I do, I'm married, but as, as, as a general rule, what's wrong with flirtation? But you see, there's something wrong with having a button under your desk that locks the door when a young staffer is in your office because you don't want them to escape, and you drop your pants and you show them your genitalia. That's not flirtation. Or when you're grabbing a woman's breast when she's asleep on an airplane, and you're a married man, and she wants nothing to do with you. That's not flirtation. Or when you're walking around in your underwear as an 88-year-old congressman, insisting that staffers come into your office. That's not flirtation. That's not flirtation. Or when you're accused of rape, as in the case of Bill Clinton. Or sexual uh, assault when Clinton attacked Kathleen Willey. That's not flirtation, ladies and gentlemen. None of that's flirtation. And now, Garrison Keillor, having 
been on public radio for so long to give his uh, the manner in which he speaks with such authority probably with his pants down around his ankles